Howdy YouTube, Uncle Joe here, Uncle Joe's Playhouse. How is everybody doing? Been a few days since my last video. And today I thought I'd do something a little bit differently. Uh, Plex seems to be a really popular thing uh, to talk about. And I know if you've experienced like I have, uh, there's not a lot of good video. There's a lot of videos out there on Plex. There's not a lot of good videos out there on Plex. One of the problems I ran into is how do you properly rip TV episodes so that Plex can go out and get the fan art and go out and get the, you know, the nice little pretty covers on your DVDs and, and label your episodes properly. And so I thought rather than you guys having to figure this out on your own, I'd show you how I do mine. So for Christmas, I showed you, I got a bunch of, uh, I got a bunch of these. This is one of my favorite sci-fi TV series. Uh, that Sci-Fi Channel put out next to Battlestar Galactica and a couple of others. Uh, uh, give you an example of some others that I like are Stargate Atlantis, Stargate, uh, the original, got all the DVDs here. But I, I have never taken the time to rip them uh, and put them on so Plex can, can use them because I don't want to have to have a DVD player all around the house. And I watch these over and over and over again. So... Uh, I've decided today we'll do an episode on how I do them and how I make them work. So, without further ado, let's get started. The key to this is properly naming your episode so that Plex knows exactly what to do and wh where to look up the titles for those episodes. So right here I've gone to a place called epguides.com and then I, I put Eureka in there. You can just do a search episode guide for whatever program you're looking for. And so what it'll tell you down here is that uh, here's the season, here's the name of the episode, here's the episode number and the season number, etc. So that'll give you some idea of how you uh, can properly label your episodes so that Plex finds them. However, one thing you're going to notice, let me give you an example. If you look here at Eureka Season 4, according to Eureka Season 4, there are 20 episodes, all right? But... If you get the DVD, like I did, for Christmas, from Amazon, you get this lovely little box for season four. They even go to tell you, go so far as to tell you it's printed on recycled paper. How green they are. What they don't tell you, tell you is that this is not actually all of season four. Season four, in this box, only has two DVDs. Season 4 is actually 4 DVDs, but what Sci-Fi has done, and I guess it's to make more money, is they have split Season 4 into Season 4 and Season 4.5. So you get half of your episodes on one disc that costs you 20 odd bucks, or one set of discs, and then you have to pay another 20 bucks to get the rest of the season. And they get away with it by labeling it a half season. Battlestar did the same thing. So one thing you need to be aware of is when you go to look at this list, uh, like I did, I, I, I was totally dumbfounded. I went to pull this disc and I was like, dude, I'm missing two discs. Oh no, it's actually season 4.5. So just be aware of that. Now the program I'm going to be using to rip these DVDs is called Make MKV. And there are some steps you need to take before you go to ripping your DVD in order to label it properly and I'm going to try and explain this as simply as I can. Um, I use a program called VLC Media Player to play all my DVDs um, and I'm going to bring that up How hopefully I mean if I get a copyright flag I get a copyright flag but this is a, a disc that I own and that I am going to rip but if I go to my episode index uh, there's there's uh, episode one, there's episode two, there's episode three, and then there's the holiday episode. So if I were to go to this episode here and have it play, and I'm going to pause it right here, um, I want to know specifically what file on the DVD this is so that when I go to rip it using MKV, I'll know what files to tell MKV to rip. So if I just started playing it, if I, if I right click on it and come back to playback, and go to title, you'll see, you would think it's title one, right? No, it's not. It's title 14 is the first title on the disc. This, you know, they cram these discs full of extra features. 
So when it looks like title 14, 15, 16 are the first three titles, as you can see here, they're all pretty much the same length. And then you've got some more down here that are the same length. So we're going to have to do a little bit of detective work. So we know title 14 is actually title one. Okay, so if we go to reprise and we pause it and go back to playback, go to title, you'll see that it's title 15. I think you're allowed to play like six seconds of a video before uh, before they will, yeah, and it is title 16 as you can see there. Now let's go look at the holiday episode. We'll pause it. And that one is title 20. So we have 14, 15, 16, and 20 are the ones we want to rip. And you might want to write that down somewhere. So again, 14, 15, 16, and 20 are the titles you want to rip. I use a program called Make MKV, and uh, it's free. Uh, you can, uh, it's still in beta, I believe. Uh, maybe it's not. Uh, it tells me there's a new version available, but I haven't downloaded it yet. And so what Make, Make MKV will do is it'll, it'll break the encryption on the CD or DVD uh, and allow you to rip it uh, out to, to the hard drive. And I don't, we, I did a previous video on uh, my Plex media server and how I don't bother to convert DVDs to MP4s anymore because hard drive spray, space is so widely available and relatively cheap. I just don't find a need to rip, uh, convert them to MP4 files. I just leave them in their native MPEG-2 and uh, do it with an MKV extension, but I digress. So let's go ahead and read this disc. Uh, the first thing I do, I have the disc in the drive. It's labeled Eureka. I want to go ahead and read it and uh, let it read all the uh, files on the disc. So here's what we end up with. Now, once you look carefully over the left-hand side, you'll see there's a lot of, of, uh, a lot of things over here that can easily confuse you. For example, our first title has eight chapters. What I'm looking for is the chapters that have a consistent size on them. And there should be four of them, remember? 14, 15, 16, and then 20, right? So on all of these others, we don't need these. So I'm just gonna take the check mark off on the smaller files. And I'm going to leave the check mark on on the larger files with the exception of this one. Okay. So now if I click on this four chapter, remember I told you uh, the chapter we wanted was chapter 14, 15, 16, and 20. You'll see right over here where it says source title ID 14. That's why I went ahead and played it first in uh, VLC Media Player so I knew what chapters those are, what, what ID... Uh, title IDs those were ahead of times. Now I need to do one more thing. I need to come into each one of these and I'm going to take these subtitles off. Um, what happens is if I leave the subtitles on it burns them into the copy of the MKV file and then plays them uh, within Plex and I don't want it to do that. So I always make sure I haven't figured out why it does that. I'm sure there's a workaround but I don't need the subtitles so I just make sure I go into each one of these and I take off the subtitles. Uh, and then I'm, uh, I've got four titles I need to rip. Now I'm also gonna, I rip them to a work hard drive to that. I have a one terabyte spinning hard drive in my workstation, but I need to put them into a different folder. I wanna put them in uh, season four. So I know that these are all season four files and I'm gonna tell it okay. And then I'm gonna click on make MKV. Now this is gonna take, uh, it tells me it's going to take about seven minutes to rip this entire DVD of the files that I want. And it's going to create, uh, you see the titles of the MKV files it's going to create. So we'll need to go back and fix that here after it's ripped uh, this DVD. So we'll let this run and we'll come back. All right, so it's ripped those titles to my hard drive. So I'm going to tell it OK. I'm going to go ahead and close Make MKV. And then I'm going to bring my folder up here. And this is the folder that it has uh, that I created on my D drive, spinning hard drive. <clears throat> so there's title two, title three, title four, and title six. Now here's where things can get a little bit complicated. 
Uh, I'm assuming Title VI is going to be the Christmas episode because it was ripped last. And if we come back to uh, to the web browser here, we'll see that uh, the Christmas epi episode, O Little Town, is actually episode 10. So you can see here it's out of sequence when I come down to uh, season four. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play this real quick. I don't think you'll be able to see it. Yep. That is the Christmas episode. So I need to start here in my labeling sequence. So uh, verify your titles are the correct one. And here's, you can see how I've done the previous ones and this is the way you're supposed to label them. So I'm just gonna right click and choose rename and we'll call this Eureka dash season zero uh, four dash episode 10 okay because why well because of this that is supposed to be episode 10 now episode 11 is lift off episode 12 is reprise and episode 13 is glimpse so I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna play each one of those but I'm not gonna show the video yep that is the correct sequence so now I can go ahead and I can continue to rename these episodes so I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna do each one of these season 4 episode 11 so I've labeled all of these episodes now all right so I've gotten through episode episode 1 through 13 and I'm not gonna bore you with doing the rest because there's episode 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and I'll, I'll do those at a later time. So what I want to do now that I've got all these episodes done is I want to copy this to the location where my Plex Media server is on my SAN, on my storage area network. So I'm going to come back one folder and I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose to copy the, the entire folder. And then I'm going to come back here to, uh, I have another folder out here with Eureka. And this is on my actual SAN and I'm simply going to right click and I'm going to paste that and let that copy over. All right, so the files are now copied onto my NAS or my SAN, whatever you want to call it, my uh, storage network. And you can see I still only have three seasons of Eureka here. Now, while we're in Plex, let me show you one of the, one of the settings you should set. If you come up here to your settings, and go to server and go to uh, library what you want to do is make sure you have this little box checked update my library automatically what that does is your library will be updated automatically when changes to the library folders are detected that way you don't have to otherwise you have to come back here you have to come back to your TV shows and you have to manually click this little update library box so now if I go to Eureka, I should see, no, I don't, I don't see season four. Um, I'm going to go ahead up. Oh, it's updating now, as you can see. So let's uh, look at that in real time. So now it's found season four and now it is going out and getting the titles and it's getting the episode labels. Now this will take a little bit of time because it's got to go out to the internet. It's got to figure out what episode is what and label them. But if I come back here to Eureka Season 3, you'll see it's got all my names, etc. If I were to click on one of them, it even gives me a description of the episode, etc. Now, um, while this is doing its thing, and it even gives a different title for based on what the uh, DVD cover was for that, for that season. Now, if I come back to TV shows, you see I've only done it with, with three TV shows. And... The reason I do this is because, uh, let me give you an example, uh, Stargate, I love Stargate, um, but I find it easier, I don't watch Stargate often enough to burn, to rip all those DVDs, I mean it's, it takes up a third of my bookshelf just for my Stargate SG-1 DVD collection and I don't watch enough of it uh, often enough to, to uh, burn it or to rip it and put it onto Plex. So 
you know, Plex is great for movies, but you, you can see the time that's going to be involved. Imagine ripping all these DVDs onto Plex just to have them at your fingertips. So um, I don't know that you'll want to do this, but it's something that always bugged me was how to get these episodes to, to label properly. Uh, and once I finally figured it out, I figured, hey, it'd be a good idea to show you guys how to do it because I know you're interested in Plex. Let's just see if Eureka's managed to, yeah. Now it's it's finally now gotten the name of the episodes. And you can see, oh, Little Town is correct. So if I were to go to that, uh, it, tells me, it tells me it's a Christmas episode, when it originally aired, who the director, the writer is, uh, etc. So if you're so inclined to do this, uh, this is this is probably the best way that I've found to do it by far um, of course your mileage might vary uh, and if you have a better way of doing it you know don't don't hesitate to comment in the comment section down below and let me know okay you know and I've done a lot of videos lately on drive pender and drive pool and uh, Synology and uh, uh, free NAS and uh, Unraid. And, oh, I haven't done videos on those two because I'm not going to waste my time on it. But remember, I was I was all up about Synology. Wow, I love Synology and the way they do their raid. And um, I got to thinking about that. And while I love the Synology product, I can one I can't afford a real Synology NAS. Uh, otherwise, I'd have one. But I'm not going to spend the money that's required on a Synology NAS. I'm just not going to do it. But I have I have a great solution. I have, My solution works for me, and that is DriveBender on that server. And I'm going to point out now a reason why I choose DriveBender, another reason why I use DriveBender rather than RAID 5 or Synology's RAID 5 or UnRAID or FreeNAS or any of those other convoluted ways of doing things. Um, I've said it before, I'll say it again. If your data is important to you, back it up. Don't depend on RAID. Don't depend on FreeNAS. Don't depend on UnRAID. Don't depend on Synology. Don't even depend on DriveBender or DrivePool. Back up your data if it's critical. If you can afford to lose data, for example, if I lose all my movies, is it gonna make is it gonna upset me? Yeah, it's gonna upset me because that's a lot of time I've spent ripping DVDs. But is the, is the data replaceable? Yes, it is. I can go get those DVDs, and frankly, you need a purge every once in a while on your DVD collection and put new ones on there anyway. So it's no big deal to me if I lose my movies. What's a big deal to me is if I lose client data, if I lose my photos, my videos, my Uncle Joe's Playhouse videos, things that are important to me, like my TV series. These are such a pain in the ass to rip and get the episode numbering and labeling right, I don't want to have to do them again. So, what DriveBender allows me to do is go out to that folder and say only duplicate these folders. And that's what we're going to do right now. So let me bring that up. And here's DriveBender on my NAS. And right here is my little button, or my little uh, marker mark duplication. So if I go here to duplication, and I come here to my drive pool, go down to my shares, remember all my stuff is on video, and then I have TV shows. For example, I don't want to have to re-rip any of these TV shows ever again. They're there, I, I want to be able to keep them. So all I have to do is I select this one folder, not the entire drive, and I come right here and I enable duplication on the selected folder or on the selected folder and all child folders. And then it asks me to confirm that and I tell it yes. So after a certain amount of time, you see I got a little green arrow now, it's gonna start duplicating those files. So it's only gonna duplicate these directories where I've got these files located. It's not gonna eat up my whole hard drive with duplicated files. And now I have the comfort of knowing that those files are gonna be on two drives. So you can see it's reading and writing data back and forth, splitting it out amongst those four drives that I have. So yet another good reason to use DriveBender uh, or DrivePool uh, from, uh, oh, what was that other company? I forgot the name of it, but my video's up there. You can check it out. But again, I just, I keep coming back to DrivePool uh, for my data. And this is one of the reasons why. So it's going to go out there now and it's going to replicate, duplicate data in the background while I'm doing other things.
And one more thing, I want to give a shout out to Morton out at my playhouse. I joined Morton uh, Friday afternoon when he did his giveaway and did his, uh, I think it's his first live stream. And he threw a shout out to me and we've been, uh, I've been helping Morton get some packages out of the States from Amazon shipped over to him in Denmark so that he can bring you, continue to bring you his videos. And, and again, uh, Morton, uh, graciously allowed me to do a, a, a an incredibly obvious knockoff to his channel, but do it here in the States. And, uh, uh, we, we just, we just hit it off and get along very well and, I love Morton's content. He likes mine, and and I know he sent quite a few of you of uh, his subscribers my way, and I appreciate it. And I feel honored that you have come to my channel, and uh, we want to keep bringing you excellent content. So uh, give us a thumbs up uh, down below. I'd love to get a hundred likes on this video. I asked for a hundred likes on my previous video. Uh, we've gotten up to fifty-three, so we're halfway there. Uh, we've had eight, almost 18,000 unique views. We have over 400 subscribers now. And I just want you all to know it's greatly appreciated. I like that you keep coming back. It means I'm putting out content that you find uh, informative, entertaining. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the other side.